Hello, 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 everybody. We're back and we're going to pick up with Luke chapter 11. We ended kind of in the middle of stuff last time. Uh, just a lot of complicated statements and ideas from Jesus, where he's talking about how we need to wash not just the outside, but also the inside. Remember how they were washing the outside of the cup, but the inside was dirty. And they needed to not only tie the mint and dill and the cumin, but they needed to give their hearts. And there was lots of little ideas in Jesus's sermon that we were talking about. And it ended with, I thought this was fun to draw, how there was dead man's bones underground and people didn't even know what they were walking on and how if our behavior is ugly. It's like people are walking on dead men's bones if if we have these secret uglies about us, and we don't want to be that way. So we're going to pick up and finish this section in Luke chapter 11 and move into Luke chapter 12. So let's pull out the picture. Here we go. Here we go. All right, I think it's all in focus. So we will keep reading. So Jesus had been talking to them and describing these situations that they are themselves in, and let me get this focus. And one of the lawyers, so that's one of the people that were listening there, one of the lawyers answering says unto him, says unto Jesus, Master, in saying thou this, thou reproachest us also. I think that this lawyer is saying, hey, you're, you're, you're saying that I'm bad too. And so Jesus said unto him, Woe unto you lawyers also, for you laid men with burdens grievous to be born, and you yourselves taught not, touch not one of the burdens with your own fingers. All right, this is a neat idea. So here's a lawyer, and he is showing this is the sort of, of burden that you guys need to carry. I'm going to give it like a giant cartoon one ton weight, right? This is what you guys need to carry. One ton. Right. And I'm going to give him a lawyer hat. I don't know what a lawyer hat looks like, so I'll just give him a fez. There we go. They're saying, you need to carry this giant weight, but will he try to lift it up himself? No. No. Now, the, here's the point. Here's the point. If your parents, let's pretend that your parents are terrible. Your parents are not terrible, but let's just pretend. And your parents say, these are the jobs that you need to do as a person. I want you to cut all the grass in the backyard with scissors. That's a, that's a terrible job. Can I use the lawnmower? No, no, no. I'm the ta the daddy. I get to use the lawnmower. You need to use scissors. Does that does that sound even and helpful and good? No. And parents, no. But mom and dad, I'm only two and a half years old. And then they say, do it anyway. That see how it's it's uneven. It's not right. The 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 parent no. be wait. Shouldn't the kid be allowed to use the lawnmower and make the parents use the scissors? But no. And so the point here is that these lawyers are talking about rules and laws in a selfish way. You won't even lift it with your finger. Woe to you because you build the tombs of the prophets and your fathers killed them. So your witnesses and consent to the works of your fathers for they killed them and you build their tombs. They are making very fancy. Let's see what kind of. Um. I'll just do the the kind of tomb with the with the like the uh, the stone rolled in front. So here's the 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 mountain, and there's here's the tomb, and they're trying to make the tombs pretty with flowers. Oh, we love those prophets, but they but their parents killed the prophets. I think here the point is you guys are acting like you're nice. You guys are acting like you're doing lovely things, but you would have done the same thing to those prophets. Isn't that what happened to Jesus? Didn't they end up killing Jesus too? And so he's just saying, you guys are hypocrites. You're trying to make the tombs nice, but you yourselves are being ugly as well. It reminds me of what Jesus said here about the secret bones underground. It's like you guys are trying to make these tombs nice, but you can't do it. Therefore also says the wisdom of God, I will send unto them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall kill 
and persecute. That's not good. That the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. For from the blood of Abel unto Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary, yea, I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe unto you, you lawyers, for you took away the key of knowledge, and you entered not in it yourselves. And to them that were entering in, you hindered. Okay, so this is this is what this section is. He's talking about a lot of killing and persecution, okay? And he's talking a lot about the blood of the prophets, Abel and Zechariah. This is what I think the idea is. Here is this man, and he's got he's um, got his arms folded. He's like, I don't care. I'll, I'll go ahead and put another fez on him because that's what I had to draw. And he's saying, nope, I don't care. And what does he not care about? He doesn't care about blood. All right, so that means we got to draw some blood. So here, let's draw a dead guy. This is kind of sad to draw a dead guy, right? Oh, my goodness. We'll draw some blood on him. What's going on right here in this picture? Do you see the guy's attitude? He doesn't care about that blood. He might have put that man to death himself. They're not caring about these people. And I think that that's really the point here. What happened to Abel in the Old Testament? Can you remember? Cain and Abel. He got killed, right? By his brother. By his brother. He got killed mostly because Abel was good and his brother was evil. And he didn't like that. So he killed his brother. Was Abel a prophet? I didn't know Abel was a I think the point is he was killed like a prophet. And Abel died way at the beginning, right? And then there's this other prophet, Zechariah, who also died. Now, here's something that I think is fun. In English, what does the name Abel, what letter does it begin with? B. No, that's Zechariah. A. 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 So we've got Abel to Zechariah. Do you see how it's like A to Z in English? Oh, huh. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. Now, that's not the way it was when it was um, it, written in Greek. But it's like all the way from the beginning to the end, these prophets have been killed. And you haven't cared. You've been putting them to death. And then it says, you took away the key of knowledge. So let's put a big key in their hand. They have the key to understanding. Think about the Pharisees and the lawyers and the scribes. Did they know the law of God really well? No. Oh, yes. Well, they knew it, but they didn't obey it, right? And so they were the teachers, and they took away the key of all this knowledge and understanding. And when the prophet said, hey, that's not right, they would kill the prophet. They took away the key of knowledge. And did they use that key of knowledge and understanding themselves? No. Right. That's right. They didn't use it the right way. You took away the key of knowledge and you entered not in yourselves. It's almost like here is the door to understanding God. And they kept it locked. Does that make sense? They kept it locked and they didn't go in. And when Jesus was coming, did they like Jesus talking about knowledge? No. 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 So listen to what happens. Um, and when Jesus, when he was come out from thence, the scribes and the Pharisees began to press upon him vehemently to provoke him to speak many things and lying in wait to catch him with something out of his mouth. What were they trying to do? What were they trying to, catch? trying to catch him? 
Yeah, they're trying to catch him. But what are they trying to catch out of his mouth? What was coming out of cool. Jesus' mouth? words that are the words right it's not like animals are coming out of jesus's mouth jesus would say words and they're trying to say what word does jesus say that we could twist and we can get him in trouble do you remember the story of daniel and the lion's den why yeah. why was daniel thrown into the lion's den what what law did he break Right. He prayed to God. They made a rule. Don't pray to anyone. Only pray to the king. And they made that rule to catch Daniel. Did they catch him? He stayed with his prayers with God. So I think that that's the idea. These guys are looking for something, some word coming out of Jesus's mouth that they could catch and they could trick Jesus with. But can you trick Jesus? No. 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 Jesus is the Lord of everything. Yeah, he knows it all. And so it's amazing. I've been tricked in my words sometimes, but Jesus, when they try to trick him, they can't get him. Okay, so let's go back to this reading here. This was this section all about the ugliness of these Pharisees and scribes and lawyers, and they're trying to trick people, and they've got the key to the kingdom, and they don't even go in. They're trying to, they're trying to set up with with heavy weights, they're trying to make the tombs look nice, and they're not even helping anybody, and they're locking up the door. This is ugliness. But what about all the other people that Jesus was talking to? In the meantime, when many thousands of the multitude were gathered together, in so much that they trod upon one another. Okay, that's an old word. What does it mean, trod upon one another? Walked upon each other? Yeah, there were so many people. I'm going to draw it like this. There are so many people that what were they doing? They were accidentally stepping on each other. Do you think they were doing it on purpose? No. No. I think it's just a funny way. The crowds were so big, they were stepping on each other. All right, that's just funny. When they were, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware you of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. I think that this is what he means, the hypocrisy. They have the key to knowledge, but they don't go in. They have the key to knowledge, but they hurt the prophets. They give big, heavy, heavy laws, but they don't pick them up. Does that make sense? Yeah. He's telling these all these people that are listening to him, you beware of these kinds of teachers. Now, here's a question. Are there Pharisees walking around at your churches today? No. No, I don't think so. But could there be a teacher at a church who acted the way those guys were doing? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it can happen. It's not supposed to happen, but it can happen. So I think this warning that Jesus is giving us is a still a good one for us to think about today. We need to look out for hypocrisy. Do you know what hypocrisy means? No. How would you describe it? It's like it's like if um somebody acted really nice but he wasn't nice. Okay, it's, that's a good description. You're doing stuff that you're telling other people not to do it. Okay, you're telling people not to do it, but then you do it. At Dobbs' house, I see your hand up. Well, hypocrisy is kind of like two-sided almost. Like you're saying that something like you're going to do something or that you are this person, but you're really not, and you're contradicting yourself. Yeah, that's a good description. I like that. It reminds me of the story of the Good Samaritan. Remember how the, the, the two guys, they passed by on the other side. They wouldn't help out that man. They should have helped. Oh, we're good people, but I'm not going to help him. That's kind of hypocrisy. Okay, so Jesus wants us to be afraid of hypocrisy. And then he says, but there is nothing covered up that shall be, not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Everything is going to be seen. Have you ever heard that you can't really hide your sin? God knows about it. This is that idea. Nothing's going to be hidden. Therefore, whatsoever you have said in the darkness 
shall be heard in the light. And what you have spoken in the ear of the inner chambers shall be proclaimed on the housetops. So all that secrecy and all that hypocrisy, they're trying to hide this kind of stuff. It's all going to be clear. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them which can kill the body and afterward have no more they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him which after he has killed with, uh, has the power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Okay, so here he's talking about what shall I fear? So we got this person who's a little bit, I'm going to give him wiggly arms because he's afraid. I don't know if wiggly arms makes fear. But maybe his knees are knocking together. So that's a fear, a fear, a person with lots of fear. I'll, I'll stick his hair up straight because he's full of fear. What are we not supposed to fear? And what are we supposed to fear? There's the word afraid, fear. He says, be not afraid of them which kill the body and afterward have no more that they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him which after he is killed has the power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. I think I'm going to draw this on the back board. So let's get that ready. Let me get this erased. No. All right. So okay. I will draw some people. Here's a guy. All right. So who is he not supposed to be afraid of? Be not afraid of them which kill the body, and afterwards they have no more that they can do. All right, let's draw somebody who's going to kill it. And I'll draw uh, a big knife in his hand. And he's got another knife over here. He's double knifed. All right. So what can this guy do to this guy? Can he kill him? Yes. He has the ability. He's not allowed to, but he, he can do it, right? If he sticks this knife right into his body, If he pricks him, will he not bleed? He will bleed. He will bleed. Okay. Is that bad? Not really. Yes. I mean, it's bad. Yes. Like, ah. That would be a bad thing, right? Yeah. And is it kind of normal to be afraid of somebody sticking a knife inside you? Yes. Yeah. But... After he kills him and he's dead, what can this guy do to him? Can he do anything else to him? Yes, he put no life in his brain. He can't really hurt him anymore, right? Because he's dead. Oh. Right? Oh. But yeah. what Jesus says is, don't be afraid of that guy with the knife. Fear him, which after he is killed, has the power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Who has the power to cast somebody into hell? God. 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 So let's draw this cloud. Now we'll draw God up there. And we'll draw him. Wait a minute. Why should we be afraid of God? Isn't God yeah. nice? Sometimes. 
That's really true. Sometimes he's very nice. Does sometimes God have judgment? I think if you should be afraid if you're disobeying him. Okay. And then when you die, you're gone. Yeah. Let's see. Dobbs house. I see a hand up. I also think that maybe this fear is not exactly like you're afraid of him, but an awe of his power. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Who has more power? God and God. Hell? Yeah. This guy, he can just kill you once. But what happens if God puts you to death because you're a sinner? What happens to you? You get killed many times. Yes. You go into the fires of hell. I'm going to draw the fiery pits of hell. Hmm. Here's the fiery pits. Draw red fire. Oh my goodness. Is that coming through? Does that look like fire? Yeah, it looks like fire. Yeah. So that, that's the thing. This guy, if he kills us, oh well, we're dead. But if God condemns us, where might we go? Now, here's a question. Jesus has been talking about these guys here. Remember these guys that are kind of mean and were killing the prophets? Yeah. Now, we, what if what if somebody comes and kills us because we're, well, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a prophet. But... What if I have the Bible? That's supposed to be an arm holding the Bible. That's the worst arm holding a Bible I've ever drawn in my entire life. But okay. What if I'm holding the Bible and that's why somebody comes and kills me? Well, would I be afraid of a knife? Yes. Yes. But after they killed me, can they do anything else to hurt me? No. No. What do you think is going to happen? How is God going to treat me if I die because I was holding my Bible? He will go to heaven. I think so. I think he's going to help me out, go to heaven, get my reward, right? I think that that's what Jesus is trying to tell us to think about. There are, there really are bad people out there. You might find bad kids, bad parents, bad people at work or at school or even at a church building. It happens. And yes, we're going to be afraid of somebody who's scary and has a knife. But what Jesus is saying is don't really, don't worry about them. You keep your fear of God. Because if the scary person wants you to do evil, who cares if the scary person wants me to do evil? I care more about God. I don't ever want to do the evil that they want me to do. Does that make sense? Kind of a big idea here to be thinking about. Jesus is wanting the adults that he's preaching to to really think about this stuff. I think it's a good lesson for us to think about too. Fear God is what he's really wanting. Fear God. But here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Is God only scary? No. Oh. He's really nice too, right? So now yeah. we're going to get a section about how God is also really good. In fact, I'm going to make sure that the smile on God is clear. Because God's a really good God. All right, let's get to the section about how God is a good God. Are not five sparrows sold for two oops, sold for two farthings? You know, you could say like two pennies. Aren't five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten in the sight of God. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. Fear not, for you hold on, let me get this focused. Well, that was bad. There we go. Fear not. For you are of more value than sparrows. All right, so let's just draw some pretty sparrows. Here's a sparrow. Draw 
There's a sparrow. I'm gonna draw a two penny thing around their neck. Oh, that's that's fun. Yeah, they'll they'll be wearing a, a necklace with pennies on it. All right, so that one bought his own. Um, so God knows every sparrow. Have you guys seen sparrows before? Yes. How many have you seen? Uh, a lot. Tell me, exact, tell me the exact number you've seen. The exact number of sparrows you've seen in your whole life. 8,173. Tell me the number of sparrows you saw yesterday. I don't even know if I saw. Maybe you know. I, maybe I did. Can anyone know? No. But who knows how many sparrows? God. Yeah. Do sparrows matter? Are they super important? No. Not really. Are they nice? But are they super important? If you found out that a sparrow died, would you go, oh, that's sad? Mm. Yeah. Yes. You probably would. But do you think if a sparrow dies, the world is going to break and fall no. apart? No. Sparrows no. don't matter. I think they're wonderful, but they don't really matter. And that's okay. That's okay. Who cares about the sparrows? God. God. God cares about little birds that don't really matter. If he cares about birds that don't matter, do you think he's going to care about you and me? Yes. Absolutely. But here's the other one. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. How many hairs are on top of your head? I, I don't know. One I got, mil million? I got like I nine mean, or maybe eight. Let's, one, let's count my hair. Let's count my hair. All right, count it all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. That's perfect. I have eight hairs. Can you imagine? God no. knows every hair on every head on every person in the world. And most people aren't bald. It'd be easier if they were bald, but even still. Like, God knows everything. And so... Oh, I'm so afraid of this guy. He's going to hurt me. I wonder if God knows about me. I wonder if God cares about me. Does of God course. know? Of course. Of course. So let's let's give this guy a whole bunch of hair. He's got all his hair. God knows him. And God knows his hair. That's a pretty cool haircut. And God knows him and cares about him even if he's just a silly little sparrow is that man just a silly little sparrow no no he's way more important than a sparrow so should we be afraid of this guy no god really really cares about us Fear not, you are of more value than many sparrows. That's a good relief. I'm worth more than a bunch of sparrows. And I say unto you, everyone who shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denies me in the presence of men shall be denied in the presence of the angels of God. All right, let's draw this. This is a relief. What does it mean to confess Jesus? He that confesses me before men. So here's a man. I'm going to draw him, and he's going to confess Jesus before these people. Okay, we suffered some technical difficulties. Let's see if we can do this now. We'll just try to finish this up quick. All right, did you guys see this picture at all? Yes, okay. we did see that pencil. Oh, you did no. see it? Okay. No, okay. no, no, we did. No. Did I see that one? No, 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 we didn't. Okay, okay. 
So the question I asked, and I wondered, wow, maybe my none of the kids know it. Let me read this again. Uh, verse 8. And I say unto you, everyone who shall confess me before men, confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denies me in the presence of men, let me underline, deny, denies me in the presence of men, shall be denied in the presence of the angels of God. Okay, what does it mean to confess? Are you there? To say that you did something. To like, say that you did something. Okay, that's one. Dobbs hands. I see a Dobbs hand. Um, to say, like, almost open yourself up and say that you did something wrong. Okay. Usually, confess means admitting that you did something wrong. Is that right? Usually, I confess that I stole the president's house, right? That way you be confessing that. But there's another aspect of confessing. Confessing also is simply just speaking, speaking something out, okay? So what is it that Jesus is saying about the confession here? Um, whoever shall confess me before men. Who is the me? Jesus. Jesus. Whoever shall confess Jesus before men. So what does this man need to say in front of these men? What's he going to say? He's going to talk about Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Whoever shall confess me, whoever shall confess Jesus before men, What does it mean then, do you think, to confess Jesus? To say you believe in him. To say you believe in him, that's a big part, yeah. Maybe even to talk about him, just to tell his stories. All that sort of stuff. And remember how there were some ugly, kind of jerky people? Would these be, would it be scary to confess Jesus to them? Yes, yeah. And would it maybe be scary to confess Jesus before the guy with the knife, especially because he's yes. going to kill you because you have a Bible? Yes. It would be a little bit scary. But what did Jesus say? Who should you fear? The red knifey guy? No, God. God. Uh, Atticus, I see your hand up. Would you have a comment? Well, well, uh, well uh, one piece ago, uh, uh, that word, 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 like it kind of meant uh, like a, a hypocrite. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. That's a good connection to hypocrisy. Good job. He's saying, if you confess me before men, Jesus will confess our name before the angels. Let's draw that back here. So, um, um, if, if this guy says, Jesus. says Jesus, then what is Jesus going to say to the angels up here? And we'll draw it. Okay, do angels actually have wings? No, nah, but we're going to draw them with wings because that's what they look like in pictures, right? Yeah. Angel. Kind of looks like a fairy person, like a butterfly. I don't all kind of, all, all kind of, it looks like a butterfly. Yeah. So uh, what? Let's give this guy a name. What's what's this person's name? Let's just make up a name for him. Bob. 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 Yeah. His name is Bob. <laughs> and Bob is standing in front of Mr. Knife Guy, who wants to kill him about the Bible. What does Bob say? Bob says, "Jesus." So what does Jesus say to all the angels? He said, Jesus. Well, Jesus said, Bob. Jesus is going to say, hey, do you know about my friend Bob? I want you to know about my friend Bob. He confessed my name before the angry red knife guy. So Jesus will confess our name in heaven. What if Bob is too afraid to talk about Jesus? What if Bob's like, 
I don't I don't know what you're talk, talking about. Uh, I've never heard of Jesus. Didn't Peter do that? Right. I, I, don't, I don't know who that guy is. If he won't say Jesus's name aloud, will Jesus say Bob's name to the angels? No. 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 This is a serious thing. We have got to get it into our mind. Who do we want to impress? Who do we want to like? Do we want to like grouchy red knife guys? Uh, no. We want to be afraid and have fear and respect of God. And we want Jesus to say our name in heaven. But what if a red knife guy has two red knives? That's scary. Well, does God know us? Does he know every hair on your head? Yes. Does he know every bird that's out there too? Yes. Do you think God likes the birds? Yes. Yes. What does God like more than sparrows? His children. Us. You and me. God likes us way more than all that even. Yeah. So, should we be afraid of red knifey dude? No. No. A little bit. No. You have my permission to be a little bit nervous around red knifey dude. It's okay. But the big point is there's only so much that red knifey guy can do. We need to be afraid of God and have fear and love of God. Okay, so I'm going to end the class with that. And I'm going to see if I can get, uh, when I put this online, if I can put the two videos together and make one video. All right, I will talk to you later. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.